So I, I want you to go with me to the book of St. Mark. And I, I like to preach this sermon because there's so much in it. And it's so encouraging and, and so inspirational and so informative. St. Mark 1, and I'm going to start at the 40th verse, and it says this, Then, <clears throat> then there came... A leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down before him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. In other words, if you will, you can. If you will, you can. Heal me. If you will, you can. Make me clean. Praise the Lord. Here we have a very sick man. Very sick man. With a devastating disease. An incurable disease. It was incurable back then and it's incurable now. The disease of leprosy. And I don't have to get into to the symptoms and the things that <clears throat> go with that dreadful, terrible disease. But it is, it is devastating. There's, there's a stench that even goes with, with the body and the presence because the skin is really rotting and their flesh is rotting from their bones. Leprosy. <clears throat> he had heard about Jesus. This man had heard, this man heard how Jesus was able to cure all manner of diseases. Blind, he healed blind. He, he healed people who were born lame who were born deaf and mute. He healed them. Not only was he a healer, but he was a resurrector. He even raised people. So when this leprous man heard that Jesus was passing by, the Bible said, that he came to Jesus. Amen. He came to him beseeching him. Beseeching him. In other words, pleading. Pleading with him. And I'm here to tell you. That there are some situations, some sicknesses in our lives where you need to climb down off of your high horse and plead with him. Beseech him. I, I, I've known people dying of cancer and still arrogant. Huh? Still turning their nose up at people. You better learn how to beseech him. Humble yourself. Look at this man. He came to Jesus beseeching him and kneeling down to him. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. In other words, he came pleading 
and worshiping him. Those who would seek grace and mercy from Christ must approach him with honor and reverence. Hallelujah. This man was doing it. He came kneeling and pleading and beseeching. Hallelujah. Uh, next, next he knew, praise the Lord, that no healing, no deliverance, no good thing comes to us except it is God's will. You, did you hear what he said? He said, if you will. Huh? In other words, if it's in your will. Praise God. I, I don't want to do nothing that's not in his will. If it's not in his will, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Huh? Praise God. I don't want to win 970 some million dollars in a lottery if it ain't his will. The Lord your will be done. <laughs> I think it's up to a billion today. But I don't want nothing if it's not in his will. Praise the Lord. That's why he said, when you pray, Always pray first, Lord, let your kingdom come. And then let your will be done in earth just like it is in heaven. You know the will of God is totally in operation in heaven. So he said, you pray that it's in operation here on earth. Your will. Hallelujah. Thy will be done. But, but let, me t let, me, let me remind you too, though. If you live in his favor, he will allow you to have some say over his will. You remember when he told, when he told Abraham, you slay your son Isaac. Slay him, slay him. Offer Isaac up as a sacrifice. And all the way up that mountain, I, Abraham was praying. And by the time he got to the top of the mountain, the Lord told him, stay your hand. Slay not thy son. Huh? And that's when Abraham looked over and saw a ram in the bush. You, you, remember, you remember the story of Isaac, Isaiah, and Hezekiah? Yeah. Huh? Amen. You, you, you remember Hezekiah? How the Lord sent him a message through Isaiah? Right. Told him, get your house in order. For you shall die and not live. And Isaiah left him with that turned around and started out of his palace. And while before Isaiah could get to the front door, Hezekiah started talking to God. He started testifying. He said, Lord, you know me. You know how I have walked before you. You know how I have kept your commandments. And the Lord said to Isaiah, before he got the door, he said, whoa, stop. Turn around. Go back and tell him. I'm going to add 14 more years to his life. When you are in the will of God and in the favor of God, you know, you can talk to it. You can talk to him. So here, here, here's the leper's prayer. Here's the leper's prayer. 
Lord, if you will, you can. Lord, if you will, you can. You do note that the uncertainty is on his will. If you will. The uncertainty is not on his ability. He, in other words, he's saying, I know you can. Huh? I know you can. Somebody right now needs to look up and tell God, I know you can. Hallelujah. I know you're able. I know you can do it. All I'm asking is that you put it in my will. That's all I'm asking. That, that, that's where the if is. That's, that's where the uncertainty is. In the will of God. Because you don't know what God's will is. You see, God's will, you know, uh, um, you, you have no idea. Because we feel like certain things are good for us. So that's why a lot of times we tell him, Lord, if it's your will, we, we're actually trying to change his will. And God sees way up the road and says, no, that ain't good for you. Huh? How many times have you prayed and asked the Lord for something and you didn't get it? Huh? And later on, you looked around and said, thank God. Huh? Some people, some women are like that about a man, praying, Lord, give him to me, give him to me, give him to me. You said he'd ask anything. He's mine. And the Lord didn't give him to you. Two or three years later, you saw that man he said, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If it's his will, that's what we need to be praying. Lord, keep me, put me in your will. And, and that's, what, that's what he was saying. He said the question is on the will. There is no question on the can. Huh? There's no question that God can. You remember the Hebrew boys? when they were about to be thrown into the fiery furnace, the king said, I'm gonna give you one more chance. I'm gonna give you one more chance to bow down and worship me. And I don't know if it was Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego, but one of them spoke and said, listen, king, we're not careful, we're not afraid to answer you in this manner. Why? Because we know Hallelujah. How many of us could be that positive in the face of fire? How many of us can be that positive? They said, we know that the God whom we serve can. We know that the God whom we serve is able. In other words, we know he can deliver us from that burning fiery furnace but if he don't he still can a whole lot of us lose faith in god when he doesn't do what we want to want him to do right away huh them hebrew boys some said we know hallelujah if it is his will to deliver us he can but if it is his will for us to burn up in the fiery furnace, O oh king, he still can. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Why don't you touch your neighbor and say, if he delivers me, I knew he could. But if he doesn't, he still can.
Don't you doubt God because he doesn't give you what you want when you want it. You know, some people have the nerve to fall out with God. Huh? Because he didn't heal me. Stop coming to church. Hallelujah. Because he didn't do what you wanted him to do. Forgetting the fact that God is able. And anything God does not give me, I tell him, thank you anyway, because I know you know what's best for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what you better be trying to do is get in his will. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know he can. I know he can. I know he can. I don't care what it is. I know he can. Hallelujah. I know he can. Even if he's not willing, he's still able. Huh? So many times we praise God when we, when we ask him for something and God says yes. I preached a sermon one time when God says no. Will you still praise him? It's easy to praise him when you tell him, Lord, I need so and so. And right away, bap, there it is. But what about it? How, how do you feel when he says no? Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. When those Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace, they didn't know if they were going to be burned up. But the Bible lets us know as soon as they hit the fire, they start praising. They start praising God in the furnace. They didn't know if the fire was going to burn them up, but they praised God so much until God said to Jesus, this will be your first appearance. Go down there and get with those boys in that furnace and let them know that I'm with them. You better learn how to bring Jesus into your fire. Hallelujah. Somebody right now feels like you're in the fiery furnace. You better learn how to pray hard enough and strong enough till when you look around you see Jesus. Come on in. Somebody needs to tell him that right now. Tell him, Lord, come on in the furnace with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I just thought I'd leave that with you. Tell him to come on in. He's still able. Never ever doubt the, the ability of God. No matter how difficult the situation. Know that he can. He can. Hallelujah. I don't care what condition I'm in. He can. If I'm a leper, he can. Glory to God. If I'm a diabetic, you can. If I have HIV, you can. Hallelujah. If I'm broke, you can. If I don't have a job, you can. I wish you'd touch somebody right now and tell them, my God, he's able. My God, ain't he able? Ain't he able? Tell him, Lord, I know you can. 
Lord, I know you will. I can tell him that too. I can tell God, Lord, since I live in your favor, Lord, I know you can. And I know you will. Tell him I know you can. I know you will. I wish somebody would ran back with me today and get you a good heaping voice. Let me hear your hoop with me. Tell him, Lord, you able. Anybody know that he's able? Lord, Lord, you're a healer. Lord, you're a deliverer. Lord, you are a way maker. I know you can. You might be broke right now. Somebody didn't know how you're going to pay your bills. But Lord, I know you can. Somebody's wondering about your children. What about that boy that won't do right? Tell him, Lord, I know you can. Lord. Somebody looking at me. It seems like your marriage. Join us for one of our spirit fill services. We're located at 923 Valley Brook Road in Decatur, Georgia. For directions or more information, contact us at 404-508-1400. God bless you. We are delighted that you have joined us in this weekly telecast from the New Beginning Full Gospel Baptist Church. Until this same time next week, this is Bishop Morton saying we love you so much. You go with God.